all the way through the science of getting rich. Wallace D. Waddles reminds us that you don't get rich by doing certain things. You get rich by doing things in a certain way. That certain way is what Rhonda really grasped in the film The Secret. See, Rhonda Byrne was illuminated. She studied this book, and a gleam of illumination penetrate the depths of her consciousness, and she was inspired to share this with the world, which she's doing, and it's growing so rapidly. If you go and stand in front of the mirror, you will see a reflection of your body, but you will not see a reflection of yourself. That's your body. That's the house you live in. Your body is a molecular structure. It's a mass of molecules at a very high speed of vibration. If you're going to change the results in your life, you're going to have to go inside. You're going to have to begin tapping into your mind. We've got a basic problem here. No one has ever seen the mind. In fact, if I asked you to think of the mind, you probably, if anything, get an image of your brain on the screen of your mind because we think in pictures. Think of your house. A picture of your house will come on the screen of your mind. Think of your automobile, and again, an image will come onto the screen of your mind of your automobile. Your front door, your kitchen table. Do you see how pictures flash on the mind? Now think of your mind. What picture do you get? If you're like most people, no picture comes to the mind. Confusion reigns. Now I want you to imagine that your head is your mind and everything from the neck down is being the body. Now, of course, that's not the way it is. Mind is movement. Mind is not a thing. So mind is in your fingernail, it's in your hair, it's in every molecule of your being. But we do have to have an image to operate with. So we're going to let the head represent the mind. And everything from the neck down represent the body. Now we're going to put an imaginary horizontal line from ear to ear. Everything above that line we're going to refer to as the conscious mind. Everything below that horizontal line is going to be referred to as the subconscious mind. Now, the conscious mind has hooked up to it like little antennae, hearing, seeing, smelling, taste, touching. These are sensory factors. They're hooked up to our conscious mind, and they help us correspond and communicate with our outside world. Now, in your conscious mind, as we're going to find, you also have intellectual factors. You've got the ability to think, and you can think anything you want to think, and you think in pictures. Now, if I'm sharing an idea with you, which I'm doing right now, I am attempting to form images in your conscious mind. Now, as these images come to your conscious mind, because you can think, because you do have a reasoning factor, you can accept or reject anything you hear. There's a great book written by Dr. Viktor Frankl. He was a Jewish psychiatrist that spent a war years in a camp, and he was subjected to a respectable amount of physical and intellectual abuse. But it was while he was in the camp that he became aware that no one could cause him to think something he didn't want to think. He wrote a book on it called Man's Search for Meaning. You and I have the ability to choose our thoughts. If you see a headline in the paper that said the economy is going down the tubes and that comes into your consciousness, you can reject that. You don't need to get emotionally involved with that idea. If someone says something to you that's unpleasant and you don't want to get emotionally involved, just reject it. We choose the images that we accept and the ones we reject. Now, unfortunately, as little children, we were actually conditioned to live from the outside in. I am going to encourage you to switch that around and begin living from the inside out. Do you know that's what the Bible teaches you? The Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, all the good books tell us to go inside, live from the inside out. But we've been programmed from our childhood to live from the outside in. We get a report card, and we look at the report card. And if the numbers on it aren't too good, in school, we think we're not very good as a student, that we're missing something. The truth is the report card just tells us where our mind was at for a very short period of time, maybe three or four weeks ago. It has absolutely nothing to do with our potential. We have infinite potential, and we want to start to think that way.